Alright everyone, yesterday I was able to make a trek to the local Apple store in Honolulu and I was able to get up close and personal with the new MacBook and MacBook Pro. And here are some of the pictures that I was able to take. Now I was in full on gig out mode so I brought my MacBook with me and I was able to put it on the table and have some fun with it. And here are some comparison shots between my MacBook and MacBook Pro. Now before I go on, I'm actually going to make two videos today. Uh, this first video is just going to be my thoughts and impressions and general overall thoughts and feelings with the new MacBooks hands-on. Second video is going to be a video or a response to some of the comments I made or some of the comments on the video I made yesterday. So I'm going to split this up into two parts because there's actually a lot of what I want to talk about in regards to the new MacBooks that just came out. So anyways, as we can see, uh, I was looking mostly at MacBook Pro because I'm seriously considering not anytime soon, like maybe two or three years from now when my warranty finally ends on this MacBook. When the warranty ends, I'm thinking I might go to a MacBook Pro and that would be my first professional Apple laptop. So far, I've just been using iBooks and MacBooks, not the Pro, not the PowerBook or whatever. So I was mostly interested in looking at the MacBook Pro and that's what those are the comparison shots that I have. So here you can see here's the basic size difference between the two. And uh, this, in terms of height and in terms of like uh, how tall the screen is, pretty much the same as, as the previous generation. Uh, moving on, this is more of a bird's eye view once again. You can see that the lines are much more clean on the newer MacBook Pro. And once again, a little bit hard to see. I don't know how well the compression is going to mangle this because YouTube. But you can see visibly right here, this is my trackpad button. And once again, here is the MacBook Pro. No visible button, very clean. And yeah, it's going to take a little bit used to getting to. But the good thing about this button is when you press down on the trackpad, you get a tactile click. So instead of just you know having a button protruding and just sticking up they just integrate it right into the trackpad you push down and you still get a tactile click feedback so at least Apple didn't screw that up <laughs> um, what else you got here as you can see that the lines in the MacBook are actually very clean no real visible scenes or differences and it's very appropriate that they call this thing the brick because Really, when you when you look at it up close, that's what it is, and that's what it feels like. So it looks like they took a lot of the design cues from the MacBook Air, but different from the MacBook Air, or different even from the previous generation MacBook Pro, is that the thermal properties, when engineering this uh, laptop, got a lot a lot better. I noticed now that on the previous, like on the old PowerBooks and on the old MacBook Pro, the bottom of the casing, like it got very warm. Let's just say it was uncomfortable and that's that's one of the main reasons why I didn't want a MacBook Pro is because it was made out of aluminum and the uh, the thermal dissipation was not the greatest. It would it would almost seriously cook your leg so that's why I didn't get the MacBook Pro to begin with. But now looking at the thermal envelope between the two I would say that the MacBook Pro maybe even runs cooler sometimes than my MacBook. Now, of course, they're both running currently Penryn chips. So Penryn chips are lower power. So maybe that's why also. But either way, uh, the thermal envelope on the new MacBook Pro is very good. Very good. I was surprised. I mean, it's made out of aluminum, and usually aluminum transfers heat uh, just because it has a lower specific heat than plastic. So that means that, you know, you can heat up the aluminum a lot more quickly. But on the MacBook Pro, uh, they must have re-engineered the the, uh, the ducts and the, the airflow because I really can't tell much of a thermal difference between the MacBook Pro and my plastic MacBook. Uh, here's a side-to-side -side shot trying to look at the uh, comparison and thinness on the bottom. Not much to see here. Uh, I was kind of in a rush. I didn't want to like bogart the table and occupy all the time, so it's not the best. And here we go, side by side, here are the ports. Uh, zoom in just a little bit. And here are my ports here. MagSafe, Gigabit Ethernet, Mini DVI, FireWire, two USB ports. And that's my FireWire 400 port. 
and you know the rest. Coming over to the MacBook side, it seems a lot more minimalistic actually. So once again, MagSafe, Gigabit, the Display Port, Mini Display Port, two USBs. Oh no, actually, I think this one's FireWire 800. This one should be FireWire 800, and this one should be the Mini Display Port. Uh, PC card slot and or express card and the uh, headphones and the audio ins and outs so very minimalistic but one thing one thing I don't like about my MacBook that they also did with the MacBook Pro now is that they moved all the ports all to the left side sometimes I don't like that one thing I liked about the old MacBook Pro was that the layout of the ports seemed better because you had a USB port on one side and you had a USB port on the other side. You had, yeah, I mean, the, the just the layout of the ports, having it go on both sides, I like that better. Now they just made it more like the MacBook Air or more like my, actually they copied the design from the MacBook, put all the ports on one side. Sometimes I don't like doing that. Sometimes I want to put a mouse on the right-hand side. I don't want to have to stretch the mouse cable all the way to the left-hand side just to plug a mouse in. So... I kind of wish that they kind of kept the port layout the same, but they didn't, so that's what they did. And again, this is probably the best picture I was able to take yesterday. This is a comparison of the uh, thickness, and anyone who actually owns a MacBook currently knows that the MacBook is actually pretty damn thin. I mean, I came from an iBook G4, and the iBook G4 was just a beast. That thing was like an inch and a half thick. So going from my iBook G4 down to my MacBook, it was like it was awesome because it really felt like I was getting the thin the thinness of the PowerBook that one inch thin. It's a little bit over an inch. It's like 1.06 inches, I think. So we're going from 1.06 on the left with my MacBook, and this thing is just even skinnier. And the way that they were able to achieve the uh, the difference in in thinness is because they basically just shaved the display. So the, uh, as you can see, the, the display seems a lot thicker than it really needs to be. So they were able to go transition from this, uh, even on the, on the MacBook Pro, which is still thinner than the MacBook, but they were able to shave the actual thickness of the uh, display portion of the laptop and go just straight into this. And that's where a lot of the, uh, the they were able to shave a lot of the thickness off the laptop was just by working primarily on the display portion because you know I mean most of us aren't made out of money and most of us aren't going to be dropping the perfectly good uh, Apple laptop to go get the aluminum one <laughs> I mean let's get real here but so that's that's what seems to be going on and once again back to the uh... so that's just the comparison between my MacBook and MacBook Pro side by side and really, it's really tempting for me to get the MacBook Pro. Only reason why I don't want to get it is because I uh, sometimes when I go on trips, my MacBook is everything to me. So, you know, on the odd vacation every once or twice a year when I go on an airplane, uh, the MacBook Pro would be too, it's seriously too tall and too big for me. So... It's the only reason why I wouldn't get a MacBook Pro is because I do take my laptop with me on trips. It's all my movies, everything is on this thing. So that's why I don't want to bring... That's my one reason why I wouldn't. It just seems a little too big, a little too cumbersome for me to go, especially on the tray table and coach on a 767. That's all I can say.